to their decks that we're going to be seeing in this matchup. You can see our players setting up here and we'll get into those prize cards shortly. Absolutely. So um, looks like Natalie Miller is going to be playing a Lost Box variant. So we have seen a ton of Lost Box so far on our stream, and we get to see it again. Uh, here on the big stage in our round eight. Yep, so we do see both these players at five and two. So that means that with the win, we have that opportunity to maybe ID into cut in the ninth round here. And it's going to be the Gardevoir featured on the other side from Tetsu. So an uh, interesting matchup that we've heard a lot of interesting things about uh, Lost Zone potentially uh, worried about seeing that Mewtwo V Union, but I don't think we're going to see that this time around. Nope, yeah, this is going to be, we got a little taste of two different versions of Gardevoir. Now we're going to get to see it again. So I'm excited to see how this plays out here. Let's check out our prize cards for our players here. Doesn't look like anything too wild. It looks like we're in for a good game here. All right, so let's go. Let's jump straight into this game. We see the fist bump here, and let's get into things. Our Swiss round eight, we have Natalie Miller versus Tetsu Watanabe, and we are starting over here on Natalie's side of the field with that Hisuian heavy ball, so any basic Pokemon that's in those prize cards can be drawn out right now. And, of course, getting a look at your prize cards on your very first turn is incredibly uh, amazing as well, especially when you are playing a Lost Box deck. Yeah, saves a lot of time, saves a lot of brain power, as we like to say. It's uh, you just get to uh, get some good information, and hey, you know, free comfy. Free comfy, indeed. Yeah, that's always nice to have, especially in your initial uh, setup. Here, we'll see what else is in the hand uh, for Natalie Miller. We're just going to jump straight into that pivot there into the comfy after that beach court comes into play, which is going to uh, uh, make retreat costs one colorless less, which allows for that nice little technically free retreat. Yeah, we, we definitely enjoy seeing that there and gonna get one card into the Lost Zone, hopefully with an opportunity to add some more here as we see the Nest Ball adding an additional Comfey and uh, it's it's always very important to see these cards into the Lost Zone early on and yeah. uh, of course we've mentioned uh, with the Lost Box decks, getting to two usually feels like a really comfortable spot but uh, with these builds with the Forest Seal Stone and the Lost Vacuums, there's definitely potential to really have an explosive opener regardless of how many cards get in the Lost Zone. Yeah, absolutely. And we've only seen, uh, yep, that one so far, but still a lot to get through. We just saw that Nest <laughs> Ball here that's going to take out another Pokemon? Uh, well, that's pretty cool. When you get to throw away all of these psychic energies to start things oh, off, that's exactly goodness. where you want them, I suppose, as you'll have access to them later on. But we'll be looking for some good resources. Would love to see some additional routes here. Yeah, I didn't realize we're on Tetsu's turn because that Comfy so rotated there. But uh, yeah, we're over here straight into Professor's Research. And yeah, this is definitely a deck where you do actually want to see the Psychic Energy in the discard pile here because it is uh, quite nice to just manually attach them from there with your Art of War. But here we go. Fog Crystal is going to be able to search out either a basic Psychic Energy or a basic Psychic Pokemon here for Tetsu. Um, most likely going to be that Pokemon as we saw in our former... Uh, Gardevoir EX deck matchups um, that Curlia is incredibly incredibly strong. It is pretty much the the function of this deck here. So getting out as many Ralts as you can is super important to have those future refinements. Yep, you love to see that. We also see, I believe, a rare candy in the hand too, along nice. with the Ultra Ball. So uh, there could be an opportunity to maybe get aggressive uh, in this game. I'm going to have to wait one turn, but uh, we could potentially see that as well. Absolutely. All right, let's keep rolling through this turn here on Tetsu's side of things. Going to lose a couple of resources here with the Ultra Ball, but just valuing and getting into the deck here. Uh, could potentially go for a, a card like that Zacian. We've seen this be uh, a, a general opening strategy. It is unfortunate to just uh, start attacking with a V in, uh, with this deck, so 
Uh, I don't I don't dislike just going for the Ralts here and start to think about uh, your next turn. Yeah, definitely just getting those prepped is still a very strong way to start. Um, we're definitely not seeing any sort of like attach pass turns here with all those Ralts now all out on the field. So that might be just the conclusion depending on what else is in hand here for Tetsu. But yeah, pretty, pretty solid way to start this match here. And that's just gonna be the pass over to Natalie Miller now. So we're about to see Lost Box do some Lost Box things starting off with that flower selecting. Uh, Sableye is gonna have to go to Lost Zone, but for a Colrus's experiment, which is a staple card that we need to see. Worth it. <laughs> Worth it, yeah, indeed. That's exactly what you're looking for there. We see the forest seal stone in the hand. Lost vacuum is found here. So there's potential to see a really strong turn. Now, of course, we did see that there's a bunch of Ralts there in play. If there was potential access to Radiant Greninja this turn, we could see a ridiculous turn where you just wipe out plenty of Ralts. Yeah, yeah. this is definitely uh, one of those games where you are scared when you see a Radiant Greninja um, on the other side of the field because that is definitely something you are weak to. If you lose all of those Pokemon that are, you know, making your deck function, you're going to have a really, really difficult time here. And speaking of that scary Radiant Greninja, it's coming into play here. And then also jumping back into the deck off of a Nest Ball as well to get that Drapion V out yeah. onto the field. Uh, you know, it, it Ooh, looks look at that. it looks awful, but it, uh, it's a good attacker. And sometimes <laughs> you just charge it up and you can knock out a Gardevoir EX out of nowhere. So uh, yep. this is a fine Pokemon to go ahead and establish on the board. And uh, this could be a big turn. Absolutely. And it gives you, of course, access to that Forest Seal Stone. It gives you a V-Star power as well, which is exactly what we just saw there to search out any card uh, from your deck for Natalie Miller. So yeah. establishing even more uh, for this turn off of that Forest Seal Stone. Imagine being able to look for any card in your deck and you grab water energy, but it's actually <laughs> correct. True. It's all you need. As we see the Mirage Gate here, uh, going to be able to accelerate the lightning in the water. Then you have that water attachment for the turn. And uh, I kid you not, that is a Moonlight Shuriken on turn two. That is incredible, Kyle. Moonlight Shuriken already lined up here. Did I think I was going to see that? Absolutely not. And that's what we're going to see. And that's exactly what I was saying, Kyle, that we don't want to see, unfortunately, <laughs> if we're on Tetsu's side of the field here. Yeah, seven cards, at least seven in the Lost Zone there to pull off the Mirage Gate into that Moonlight Shuriken. Absolutely devastating here on Tetsu's side of things. Of course, those two energy are discarded off the Radiant Greninja now and is back over to Tetsu here. But now we're just down to one Curlia. What could have been so much more potential for this turn was just wiped away by a, by a little frog. Yeah, I mean, there was one card in the Lost Zone and Tetsu had an opportunity. He had used that Ultra Ball and went and found the third Ralts instead yeah. of going for the Manaphy. And sure enough, was punished there. Just didn't think in this format uh, that Natalie would have the audacity to attack on turn two with a Radiant Greninja. But sure enough, here we are. And now you have a Curlia, and it's still in danger. <laughs> Never underestimate Natalie Miller. That is what we are learning here in this match. I mean, I already thought that, but we're learning it here today for yeah, sure. I, I'm not messing around. <laughs> no, absolutely not. All right, so we're going in with a Fog Crystal now. I assume Tetsu's going to probably go for a Pokemon here to start establishing some bench action here. It is going to be that Cresselia here from Tetsu, uh, benched straight down off that Fog Crystal. Yeah, well, uh, if any Pokemon could have been found there, that would have been ideal, but it just has to be that psychic. It and has we, to, uh, yep. We see, and just going for uh, the Cresselia, it's honestly just thinking about thinning here, and wow, this actually paid off. Found the level ball, so there is an opportunity nice. to uh, get that Manaphy into play. Still only have the one Curlia, but maybe there's a, a world where we see the uh, uh, a, w a way to bring back these Pokemon. Absolutely. Now we're going to see the benching of that Zacian V here. The psychic type, maybe not a lot of people are used to seeing that because we were so used to that Zacian V, uh, the metal type, for so long. But actually, this psychic Zacian V is incredibly powerful and fits absolutely perfectly into this deck as well. When you when you want to end your turn, you know, draw out some energy and uh, line things up here, that's a great card to do it with. 
Well, this might be the, the worst bench I've ever seen from a Gardevoir. <laughs> this is so unfortunate, but I think this is just what Tetsu has to do at this stage. Establish yep. an attacker, clear some Pokemon, and maybe you get uh, an opportunity to, to reestablish these Gardevoirs and try to make a game of this. Yeah, like we need, we need to get an attacker somewhere here, so it is going to be that Zacian V for now, just because all those Ralts were just wiped off the field here. It was so devastating in a, such an early turn that we saw, but that's what's what it's got to be sometimes. Natalie Miller over here now working uh, with her turn here. Looks like it's going to be um, the energy recycler or potentially, yeah, debating between these two. Yeah, energy recycler and battle VIP pass is going to go to the lost zone here off of that Colrus's experiment. Yep, I mean, you're already pushing a lot of aggression Maybe not needing that energy recycler to uh, to clean things up. And we're going to see this escape rope put a little more pressure on. Yep. And it's going to be the Cresselia up to the active spot. Not not exactly your ideal attacker in this in this moment. Absolutely. Oh, another energy hitting the loss zone here off of that flower selecting. Uh, I don't know what's above that, but that's at least two energy that we can see in the loss zone as of now for Natalie. Uh, we do see that heavy ball. Uh, coming into play here, another yep. heavy ball. Uh, as long as there is a Sableye, then this is going to be fantastic. We did see one lost early, but I think there's one in the hand along with that Psychic Energy. Nice. Beach Court going to make easy uh, access there as the Confe runs away. And uh, we don't like Curlio on this chat. Oh, no. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, no. Yeah, being able to place damage counters. It's not damage that would uh, that the mana fee would prevent here. It's damage counters is what we're working with. And it's 12 damage counters off of this lost mine on the Sableye. Now that Natalie Miller has a lost zone with 10 plus cards in it. So that is rough. This this, this just gets rougher, honestly, Kyle. Yeah, I, I want to scoop. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even playing scoop? and I want to scoop. <laughs> this is this is so tough. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I suddenly started craving some ice cream, Kyle. <laughs> I wonder why. Not one scoop Scoops or two. on the mind. <laughs> All right, well, yeah. I that's... guess you're never out of it when you have Roxanne. <laughs> but, that's uh, true. That's true. That's uh, You're asking for a lot. Yeah, when you're looking, yeah, it's that's just true. Clara. It's just a rainbow Clara here. So, yeah, oh, that is tough. Curlia getting wiped off the board in that last turn. So, we at least have some coming back here into the hands as well as those two energy from the Clara. Those go straight into your hand. So, great card to have, but uh, just such a difficult situation we're dealing with here. We're going to see that concealed cards to discard one of those energy that was just drawn back into the hand. So awesome utility there for two more cards. Uh, and then we're just going to see another Ralt hit the bench here. Sorry, another two Ralts hit the bench here for Tetsu to try to establish something. And then going into this Zacian V, of course, that beach court is still in play here for that pivot there. Yep, and that is very helpful, as some pressure needed to be had there. You need to present a threat that's formidable and maybe take some of the pressure off of these Ralts. You need to establish these, start to draw cards, and maybe you can find a supporter to help you out of this mess. Yep, and that was good. That was the Storm Slash off of the Zacian V to take that knockout on the Sableye here. So going down at least one prize card here for Tetsu. Oh, back over to Natalie Miller uh, on this side of things. We did see that concealed cards already be utilized for the turn, and it looks like we're jumping into an energy recycler, potentially counting the energy that are in the discard pile to see uh, where things are tracking out here for Natalie. But it looks like it is going to be um, that Colrus's experiment first off here. Of course, sequencing is so important here, and you don't want to uh, Colrus's experiment into a bunch of energy. So Yeah, we've, we've seen that before, and it's we not have. pretty. So uh, very well done here from Natalie, and I'm uh, going to have this opportunity now to bring all these energies back. If we do see that Mirage Gate that we expect, it uh, looks like there's a pretty good knockout lined up as uh, Raiko with a full bench on both sides lines up very well into Zacian V. That's a lot of damage here. Goodbye. Oh, yeah, here, here we go. Here's that ice cream we were talking about, Kyle. The scoop has commenced here for Tetsu, and we are going to be going into a game two between these players. Natalie Miller taking our first game here in this set.
Yep, hopefully not ready to put the sprinkles on top just yet. <laughs> I want to see a little more gameplay. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that just speaks to uh, how strong the Lost Zone deck is. Uh, just having the, the potential to still perform that turn two attack and to put all that pressure onto the, the Gardevoir deck. I hesitate to call it a Gardevoir deck. We didn't see anything. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, when all the Ralts are wiped off the field, it's a bit hard to get into a Gardevoir. Oh, no. Um, yeah, so Natalie definitely uh, doing well with this deck so far. I, I, have you gotten a chance to look at the lists at all on Natalie's side of things? How How is it looking as far as build-wise, Kyle? Let's say very consistent, which is exactly what I expect uh, from her. She's found uh, a really good mix of uh, some aggression here, but also just that consistency of the three vacuum, two forest seal stone, uh, finding a way to get exactly what you need on that opening turn, but also establish a presence in the law zone. Yeah, beautiful. Definitely. We, we saw so many cards. I feel like, you know, I looked up and there were seven in the Lost Zone already. Uh, there yeah. was so much happening there. And Natalie just got there as quickly as possible, representing Australia out here on the big stage at our European International Championship. That's going to be three psychic energy in the prize cards here for Tetsu. Yeah, really good placement for the Sableye there for Natalie. That's a card that yeah. when you draw into, you're probably at seven in the Lost Zone, and then uh, potentially we see that card come out right on time with ten. Absolutely. All right, we're kicking off our game two here in our Swiss round eight, starting on Natalie Miller's side of the field here. So we're going to see that battle VIP pass always what you want to see first turn, because that's the only time you can actually use the card uh, to get those Gumfei out onto the field here. Yeah, look at that. Ten cards in the Lost Zone already. Natalie doing <laughs> fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh. Definitely reset that. <laughs> That'd be wild. <laughs> Natalie's so good before even playing a card. There's ten in the Lost Zone. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, the strategy certainly <laughs> looking strong there. Radiant Greninja once more. And seeing these additional Kumpes go into play. I'm excited to see what the rest of the hand has in store for us. Yeah, we've actually started a lot of Radiant Greninja today. That seems to be the popular starting Pokemon for our Lost Box players. It's, it's showing off. It's, you know what? I'm still here, and uh, uh, you may have seen the uh, the Radiant Serena and all these other cool Pokemon that are finally getting their moment, but uh, I'm the MVP. I'm the dominant Radiant Pokemon. Maybe <laughs> the spiritual leader. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that, is a, uh, that is a strong title to uphold after Oranguru has rotated out of the <laughs> format here, Well, Kyle. looky there. It's back. <laughs> it's found its way onto both sides of the field, and it really is such a great card. Uh, being able to get these psychic energies into the discard pile so that you can eventually work them back onto your board, and Absolutely. it gives you that additional consistency you're looking for here. But only one of them is going to Moonlight Shuriken, or has the potential to Moonlight Shuriken, I suppose I should say. So, yeah, we'll see if Tetsu um, is able to get that Manaphy out a lot sooner than we saw it last game. Um, hopefully there's something in the hands that allows for that to happen. But, of course, as you mentioned before, Kyle, Fog Crystal, it's just Psychic Energy and psych basic Psychic Pokemon here. So that would not be the card. But, hey, a Professor's Research is going to draw a nice seven cards here after discarding a few. Looks like the Serena and the Palpad were the discards there. Yeah, and just looking for a way to continue to build this board. Uh, is Tetsu, and sure enough, finds Ooh, that battle nice. VIP pass, gets to use this, <laughs> to search out that mana pieces. You have zero cards in the Lost Zone, <laughs> and I still don't trust you. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It is It is always uh, scary, as I have mentioned many times today, staring down that Greninja on the field. You never know, you never underestimate a Lost Box deck because you have no clue what's in hand, uh, how many pivot cards they have, if they're able to just, you know, clutch a ton of cards in the Lost Zone all in one. A swoop. So here we go. We have a very familiar board, but a little bench protection here from that Wave Veil Manaphy. Yep, it's nice to see that this time around. Also gets to hold on to those resources, the Level Ball and the Ultra Ball could turn into Curlia here, and that would be a fantastic second turn. So uh, love to see that. Don't love to see Mysterious Tail failing. <laughs> Whoa, not a fail on the top six cards, no. Oh, that is rough. You have to get an item card off of those top six cards. So if there's no item card, you're not drawing anything on there. But it's going to be a hard retreat there on that Celebrations Mew into that beefy Radiant Greninja here. And we are back over to Natalie's side now. 
Yep, realistically, makes a lot more sense that Natalie will be able to perform a spit innocently as yep. opposed to uh, a so mirage gate. <laughs> so <laughs> promoting that Radiant Greninja makes a ton of sense here. Just uh, hold on to those hit points and maybe not give up so many prize cards early on. Yeah, absolutely. That is a solid HP to uh, be promoting there and surviving with throughout these turns. But here we go. Uh, charging up that Lost Zone here for Natalie Miller. That's already three cards into the Lost Zone off of these flowers selecting. Yep, Natalie does find the escape rope off the Colrus experiment and says, oh, that was cool that you uh, you brought up that Radiant Greninja. And, uh, now not I'm, anymore. Now I'm going to find a different Pokemon and knock it out. Yeah, and really, uh, all of those Pokemon are much more beneficial for Natalie to be knocking out than that Radiant Greninja, which wouldn't even take a knockout to a spit innocently. So, yeah, losing anything here is tough for Tetsu. Yeah, please take this Mew. It couldn't even find anything off Mysterious oh, yeah, right. Tail. It <laughs> failed, and now it's it. sacrificial <laughs> lamb here in that active position. I think that was a relatively easy choice here because, you know, these Curly are so important down the line here that Manaphy is not moving off that bench, hopefully, for Tetsu. So, yep, it is going to be that Celebrations Mew. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of them in the deck as well. And, yep, Cramorant is going to join us in the active position here. Five cards now in the Lost Zone which unlocks that free spit innocently thanks to that lost provisions. Yep. So no energy needed, just a quick knock on that Celebrations Mew for a nice little prize card. Yeah, it's a, it's a great option here. Take that knockout and then find the Colrus Experiment, which will bring you to seven. So regardless of which Pokemon you have in the active, even if this Cramorant is knocked out or uh, hangs out there for a little bit longer, you yeah. will always be able to get the Mirage Gate rolling next turn. Yeah, absolutely, and just, you know, taking either putting damage on the board or taking knockouts with the Kramer, you want to do that as many times as you possibly can, as long as it's the most beneficial thing for you to be doing. So it's always a nice card to have. It just takes so little resources and does so much. Cramorant is definitely one of the MVP of the Lost Box decks, for sure. All right, so we're going to see that Curlia... Uh, join Tetsu's side of the board, and that is going to jump straight into the refinement here. Discard a card from hand and draw two into your hand. It's going to be that rare candy, and it looks like a Temple of Sinnoh, which of course is shutting down special energy, not applicable in this matchup. Yeah, what are those? We haven't seen those in a, in a minute. I guess only Lugia is uh, caring about that right yeah, now. Say, yeah, say, <laughs> some, some impact energy, single strike energy. Well, we see the Ultra Ball here now, so that should lead to additional refinement. Nice. And this is where we start to see Tetsu build a hand. And we've been waiting to see this uh, as this just was impossible last time around. But when you're playing against Lost Box, yeah, they like to build a big hand, but you can build a big hand too. And they do not play a way to uh, disrupt what you are making. Yeah, we saw Tord Reklev build absolutely wildly large hands with this Gardevoir deck. So obviously not the same 60. But yeah, the Gardevoir definitely wants to be doing that, building a ton of cards up in the hand here. And we'll see where Tetsu can go. Now we've used both refinements, now jumping in with a concealed cards here for another additional two cards. Looks like it was a level ball and a judge here for Tetsu. There hasn't been a uh, supporter yet played for the turn. Yeah, I was curious to see if we see the Fog Crystal played. Yeah. And sure enough, we found a level ball there. So an additional Curlia could be yep. found. But is that really what you want to do? No, Ooh. it's going to be rare candy right into the Gardevoir EX. Uh, I yes. think we're seeing a little pressure. A little pressure indeed. Taking a little bit more of an aggressive approach here uh, for Tetsu. Going to rare candy evolve straight into that Gardevoir EX and then also utilize that Fog Crystal to go in and get a Psychic Energy as well. Well, I'm terrified when I see uh, Drapion V on the other side and know that Mirage Gate is going to be available on this next turn due to Colrus Experiments. It could line up very poorly for a Gardevoir EX, but uh, it is good to see that at least uh, there is the Judge here to potentially disrupt that. Yeah, let's just ignore the bottom left part of the card, Kyle. It's fine. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is why Darkrai came out of the shadows, right? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, Darkrai coming out of nowhere because of its typing coverage here. Yep, that Gardevoir EX is weak to darkness. So that Drapion V being out there is definitely a scary situation here for Tetsu, but got to do what you got to do, I suppose. 
So here we go. Uh, still getting through this turn. We did see the judge here from Tetsu being played. That was the one, I believe, off the concealed card. So four cards now for both of these players' hands. Natalie was building up a hand. It wasn't huge, but there was a lot of great cards in the hand. So now it's going to be a new four cards for Natalie as well as for Tetsu. Beach Court, once again, finding some play. There is potential to work in this Cresselia. Don't know how many psychic energies are in the discard pile, but maybe uh, if we saw four, we could see the knockout on a Pokemon like I that. Think there's a lot. I feel like there's a lot in there. We'll see here. One, two. Well, that's not a lot. Never mind. <laughs> we're we're going to see Cresselia's <laughs> other I'm attack. Blind. It's time for a lunar <laughs> blast. <laughs> Yeah, that is, uh, there we go. I mean, we get the knockout here, at least on that Cramorant from that Cresselia. So that is going to be a prize card from Tetsu. Uh, and yeah, we're over here on Natalie's side, that uh, Hisuian Heavy Ball, get, reaching for that Sableye here. So now it's going to be in the hand here. Again, we're working off of this Judge Hand for Natalie too. So already had a slim hand, but hey, a, a Sableye jumping into it's always nice. Yep, and still have that beach court too, so potential to see plenty of cards here. Radiant Greninja going to start things off with the concealed cards. Not finding exactly what you're looking for. Would love to find that Colrus Experiment. Ooh, is that a Mirage Gain a Lost Vacuum, I think? Yep. That's what I saw there. Yep, one of these has to go to the Lost Zone here for Natalie. So this is where things get uh, sticky. You have to make these difficult decisions. Which card is going to show you more utility in the later turns of this match? Yeah, this is tricky, and it looks like throwing away the Mirage Gate. Seeing a lot of use of that beach court from both players here. Yeah, for and sure. Maybe we're, maybe we're tired of this. <laughs> could, could always <laughs> see that uh, thrown away. But, ooh, that's a decision I like to make. Bye, Battle VIP Pass. Hello, yeah. Mirage Gate. I love how Natalie, you know, um, yeah, still just throwing it straight away, but still not as fast as we see some other players. Acting like there's some sort of debate, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Psych, I'm just kidding. <laughs> maybe I could make this good. <laughs> this battle if, VIP. If anyone could, it's Natalie. <laughs> if only there was refinement on this side, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Escape Rope is going to be proving better than Boss's Orders, Sheesh. hopefully, here. And uh, Tetsu going to try to get some information. You can't really use that Sable, like, can you? <laughs> <laughs> no, not like this. Yeah. Lost Zone is uh, at eight here right now for Natalie Miller. Honestly, there really hasn't been a lot of cards discarded for Natalie either. The discard pile is pretty slim at this point in time as well. 24 minutes left on the clock, too. This is our game two between these players. If Natalie's able to scoop this one up here, yep. uh, as in scoop up a win, then uh, that's going to be a nice 2-0 oh, and a, a, another three match points for Natalie Miller into uh, a day two. We'll pull out the Dyson, as uh, we do see the Lost Vacuum is going to bring us exactly <laughs> to those 10 necessary, and Sableye is putting in work. says, I really don't want to play against these Curlia. <laughs> They're so annoying. It's like a little dust buster <laughs> yep. type deal right here. <laughs> All right, yep, here we go. That's Sableye. You hate to see when it comes out, when it is on the opposing side of the field. And we're going to wipe one of those Curlia off the board here. Natalie Miller going down another prize card. Now it is over to Tatsu. So the pressure has definitely been on here. We did see that evolution into the Gardevoir EX. Uh, I believe it was the last turn for Tatsu. Um, and yeah, but now we're down to one Curlia here, and that's going to be the refinement. Oh no, <laughs> discarded the battle VIP, picked one back up. Well, found the Gardevoir. There's so, that. Uh, not going to complain just yet, but there's no energies. There's nothing really going on in this hand right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now that Gardevoir, that is the Shining Arcana. What a name for an ability here. Um, Gardevoir, so also allows you to look at the top two cards of your deck and attach um, basic psychic energy. Actually, I think it's just basic energy. Yeah. Um, yep. If you find them in there. Uh, they're probably going to be psychic. Yeah, yeah Shining I mean, yeah, Arcana was... It's only psychic <laughs> in here, so... Yeah. <laughs> Shining Arcana is definitely a, a, a very cool name. We've seen a, a lot yeah. of uh, fun ability names uh, over the course of this, and it's it's cool that they picked my, my high school band name. Are you kidding me? No. Kind of, what? Are <laughs> no. you serious? There's, no, I don't, I don't want to play instruments. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Kyle. Get out of here. Uh, and here we go. We're going to see that Shining Arcana. 
Kyle playing the clarinet here to that <laughs> shining arcana. <laughs> All right, so there's one energy found off of it. I, I believe that was a level ball as well. So, um, yeah, I said you can attach the energy from the shining arcana, but the other card or cards, I suppose, just go into your hand as well. Yeah. So that's it's, quite nice. It's refinement and fun. Refinement and fun, yeah, absolutely. Gets a little acceleration there. I guess Gardevoir is just meant to, uh, you know, deal with a lot of energy here. Both of our Gardevoir that we see kind of kind of mess around with some energy. Yeah, this is once more just an, an interesting spot of which Pokemon do you trust. I think you just promote the Cresselia, take this knockout, and uh, leave the pressure back on Natalie to find an answer. Maybe you can work in these, these Gardevoir... Uh, at the right time and avoid walking right into that Drapion V uh, with the EX, is, that would be uh, that'd be really tough. Yep, we're going to see that hard retreat here from Tetsu, um, bringing that Radiant Greninja. Oh, <laughs> wow. Uh. <laughs> Says, you don't have it if we saw that, that guard. Okay, apart. I was going to say, whoa. <laughs> that would have been cool. All right. Yeah, but it is going to be that Cresselia going into the active position here. Into a level ball, but just going to fail the level ball. Yep, looks like seven or eight cards left in the deck there. Doing a great job of uh, working through here, but just not taking that many prize cards. This is only going to be the second one taken of yeah. the game for Tetsu. And you start to wonder if uh, all the prizes are going to line up at this stage. Yeah, I was about to say, you know, this would even up the field here for four prize cards. But, I mean, just looking at these board states and the potential from these decks in these future turns. Like, what are you thinking, Kyle, as far as just, like, state of the, state of the game as, as far as now? Well, I think Sableye is still very strong. There's the opportunity to maybe open up some avenues and take multiple prize cards and uh, put some pressure mm -hmm. uh, back on and then try to close out with that Drapion V. Uh, so... Uh, I love seeing this Sableye come down here, and uh, I don't expect for uh, the Mana Fee to stick around too much longer. Yep, absolutely. That Nest Ball, awesome card here to bring out that Sableye from Natalie Miller. Sableye must have a pretty nice dentist <laughs> able to chomp on those, <laughs> those hard crystals there. All right, here we go. Our first flower selecting, easy choice there. Battle VIP pass hitting that lost zone. We've seen some pretty decent flower selecting choices here. Natalie kind of just playing right into resources, which is great. It's going to be the Mirage Gate here for Natalie. Oh, uh -oh. boy. Whoa. It's here. There's a boss's orders. Oh, no. <laughs> Wow. Double Mirage Gate here for all of those energy. A fully loaded Drapion V. Boss's orders for that Gardevoir EX just sitting there on the bench. Yep. Not going to look like a <laughs> Unite caster. We see no wild style this time. It's going to be the dynamic tail with all four basic energies. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that'll that do it there. And that's why it is great having Mirage Gate in your deck to do plays exactly like this. We're going to see that Gardevoir EX off of the board here. That's going to allow Natalie to take two prize cards, of course, as well, going down to only two left. And Tetsu is now left with that Cresselia, that damaged Cresselia uh, in the active position now. Yeah. How in tarnation do you handle this Pokemon? <laughs> I uh, don't know. I don't. I'm not seeing it. This is tough. <laughs> you know, I've been watching this match the whole time, Kyle, and I'm still asking myself, how did we get here? Yeah. It's, how did we get here? Uh, it's a, a lot of uh, attacking the Gardevoir line. And uh, if you can get rid of the Ralts, you're going to win. If you get sure. rid of the Curlia, you're going to win. And if you knock out the Gardevoir EX, you're going to win. I think that's why the Gardevoir deck has been so highly debated. There are people who love Gardevoir, would play it no matter what, and there are people who say there's too many vulnerabilities to this deck, and I think we are definitely seeing that now for sure. I mean, even in the mirror match, we also saw that as well. All right, we're going to see that Shining Arcana here for Tetsu. Yeah, I think this deck, if it had six Ralts, it would be incredible. That's the, the one issue <laughs> that I've run into is I, I want to have the entire board filled with these Pokemon, and yeah. it just doesn't work out unless you're able to work in that other Curlia and then Rare Candy, the Ralts and the Gardevoirs, mm -hmm. and uh, you, that never happens. <laughs> There's not enough. There's not enough. Can you imagine Pokemon TCG if there was no card limit? Uh, it'd be dangerous. <laughs> I feel like that'd be impossible, honestly, <laughs> to even 
figure out as a game. We'd say a lot of turn one attacking, probably. (laughs) There would be a lot of nonsense going on. I think Meloetta would be like the best deck ever. Oh my god. Oh yeah, you're so (laughs) true. That's so true. All right, we saw the Kalara here from Tetsu. So retrieving uh, both Pokemon and basic energy, or having the potential to, from the deck here. Uh, Gonna bring back that Ralts. Coming back to the party. I need you to rare candy next turn. <laughs> yes. I also need there to be a next turn. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> there's uh, there's definitely uh, an opportunity for this to be the last turn of the game. We'll see if Natalie has the pieces here. Energy Recycler going to bring Ooh. back some of those psychic energies, and uh, that could potentially be enough. As we see uh, a good amount of damage down already, I believe, uh, what, 50 hit points left on the Cresselia? And you could uh, line that up there with a double KO on the sa- with the Sableye. Uh, either into that Manaphy or the Ralts there. So Colrus Experiment's going to try to find that answer, and uh, there's not a lot of cards left in that deck. Not a lot of cards indeed. Natalie, laser-focused on the match here. I feel like Natalie would be I a win. very... Uh, I win! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! There we go! Yeah, Natalie Miller is going to take down this match here with a 2-0 finish for Natalie Miller representing Australia here at our international championship. You love to see it, Kyle. Yep, unfortunately going to be it for Tetsu there. As, no. uh, that is 15 match points. Can't move any further. But for Natalie, 18 match points means there's an opportunity to either find a tie in the next round or uh, honestly could Take just be dub. going for the win right now yeah. as a... Uh, you're going to need a lot of championship points uh, in day two to, uh, to have a good run and maybe make the top eight here. Yeah, I mean, just before that game was concluded, I was talking about how Natalie, I feel like Natalie would just be an intimidating player to play against. Um, I think I've maybe played against Natalie in cubes here and there, but yeah, she, she's just so laser focused on the game and knows exactly what she's doing. Sh- shakes 0% of the time. You know, even on these decisions, it's just... It's, made so definitely as well. Natalie is absolutely pro at this game. <laughs> yeah, I, I think every situation that uh, we saw, she, she piloted beautifully, yep. uh, found opportunities there, understood exactly, uh, play down that Drapion, no one's ever gonna target that, and eventually gonna find an opportunity to, uh, to sneak this into play. And when uh, when there's no mana fee, and yeah. saw the saw the lines and was able to work in that radiant Greninja on the second turn. Yeah, let me just shut your entire deck down. <laughs> How's that feel? Oh my gosh! Yeah, I was I was hurting there for Tetsu, unfortunately, in the matchup. But hey, that's what happens sometimes. And now, unfor- it's unfortunate that we didn't get to see Gardevoir uh, shine really as much. We did see a tie out of it earlier, though, in the first match that we got to cast together, Kyle. It was a tie, and then now unfortunately a lost here out of the day two contention but hey maybe there are some Gardevoir players that we'll be seeing tomorrow in our day two that can uh, show us some different lists and show us uh, maybe some some the full capability of Gardevoir yeah maybe we'll see the Mewtwo V Union up against the Lost Pox because that can be a, a yeah. little different since 